she had it parked there charging and then unplugged it and walked across to dinner. <laughs> Slowly yeah. across the street. She should have just moved the car over here. Yeah, over here, over there, over there. What was that about? My bad. <laughs> Sport response pushed. <laughs> so fast. <laughs> we have arrived at the fueling station. I'm just curious how far we've driven since the last refuel. 562 miles and almost 30 MPG. Hello and welcome to another Kyle Connor YouTube channel road trip. Um, we are just having to cover distance over the next couple days. And you join me in Central Park in New York City. So for those of you new, who know, I grew up not too far from here and um, really hate coming to the city, but it's Anna's birthday today and she really wanted to come to the city. So we're here in the city, we compromised, and uh, we're gonna get some croissants, uh, whatever she wants for her birthday. And then um, we're gonna jump in a Porsche and take it on a road trip to Atlanta. We're gonna stop at some things along the way. It's a plug-in hybrid. I wanna talk about what road tripping with a plug-in hybrid means. In, in the past, it's been really frustrating for me to road trip plug-in hybrids. I'll explain why and why I think Porsche actually does a pretty good job with them. But um, yeah, we're in Central Park. It's beautiful. So let's just go on a little walk to start us out so we can sit in the car for the next thousand miles or so. We are just exiting the park now and you can take a look here at some new buses. This is a New York City hybrid bus, so it's not idling at the moment, but you would think they would just be all electric by now. So it just kicked on the combustion engine when he hit the throttle. Interesting, it should just be fully electric. Got a Model X parked up over here, and the Panamera, I can see it, is street parked up there somewhere. Still but safe. Still safe-ish, I hope. I don't see any smashed windows on it. I don't see a lot of electric cars. That's it, right there. Um, yeah, no many, not many electric cars here in New York yet, but uh, a lot of bolts they used in Central Park here. So let's jump in the Panamera set the destination and here we are a Panamera 4e hybrid it's got the key here you can see it's a Panamera but it's got a plug so uh, that actually is kind of an interesting point that I want to talk about throughout this road trip but let's jump inside it's lightly optioned but it has everything you want and uh, adaptive cruise as an example we're in Let's crank her up. You can hear no combustion engine starting. And that is because we're in e-power mode. We're at about 50% state of charge here. So where are we taking this thing, Anna? Uh, let me look. I found a place that looks really good. Oh croissants. yeah? Yeah, uh, like flavored croissants, which I've never had. We also got some smoothies to start your birthday off right. Yeah, this one's like banana bread liquid. It's so good. Very nice. So um, we're going to continue as a guest. I guess I could sign in with my Porsche account, but it's okay. We're only going to be driving this for a couple days. Eventually, we're going to be heading off to ATL, Atlanta. Oh, never mind. It's 30 minutes Not Atlante. Well, how many miles is it? Probably like... 4.4. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's ridiculous. <laughs> um, yeah, not worth it. Okay, so, well, it's right kind of on the way out of town, though. So maybe we should just go there. Okay, whatever you want. Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta. How far away is it going to be? 14 hours. 14 hours, 900 miles. We're going to make some stops along the way. It's roughly going to be a thousand mile trip. And we are going to hit the start. So if I go to reset our trips, let's do that here. I'm going to go to trip. This is what I've done so far. I've driven 40 miles when we've gotten, well, at over 83 miles, we've gotten 33 MPG. Um, okay, let's just go here. There's a reset all trip button. Reset trip data, reset all trip data for this thing. We'll do that. The car's got 7,000 miles on it, 15% state of charge, predicting 16 miles, which is crazy because it's EPA rated at 100% for 19 miles. And I've been ripping this thing on the highway the electric motors in front of the transmission. I'll talk more about that throughout the whole thing. But um, we got a nice glass roof here, typical Panamera doing the things it does well. 
You ready to go get, uh, what are we getting? Croissants? Croissants. Okay. Yes. So, <laughs> into drive. We'll drive electric over to get croissants. Well, we're just about to head out here and it's 30 minutes to go 4.4 miles. Just insane. But I have to say the seating position in the Panamera is wonderful. The steering wheel is perfect. Porsche just gets interiors in every model so well, but especially here in, you know, I think Taycan and Panamera have some of the best seating positions. They're a bit bigger than 911. They just feel so great. So driving in electric mode here, we're going to definitely burn some electric juice. Now it says 50% state of charge, just one minor tick over, maybe 51%. We're going to go 4.4 miles. So let's see what we end up with at the end of our little stretch. Um, basically the way this electric system works, by the way, rear steer option on this, 100% worth it to get. It's freaking awesome. Uh, the way the electric system works is you have a 17 or 18 kilowatt hour battery pack, which is pretty sizable. A 3.3 kilowatt onboard charger in this one, but you can option a 6.6, .6, which I would highly do if you want to maximize your electric range. The electric motor sits in front of the transmission, which is a dual clutch transmission. And what's cool about that is it's actually controlling the clutches with an electric motor. So it's pretty neat. You do feel it slightly hesitate going drive to reverse as it kind of figures out where to grab the clutches, but it's really only something I'm picking up on paying attention to it. Um, then you have, I believe, an eight speed transmission here. And because the electric motor's in front of the transmission, it's always in its peak torque band, which is like from 1,000 to 2,400 RPM, the electric motor makes peak torque. So driving around the city with 100 kilowatts of power in electric mode is actually more than usable. Uh, and most plug-in hybrids really suck in electric mode. The RAV4 Prime and Porsche stuff really are the exceptions. The other thing is Porsche has this plunger that pops out when I'm in e-power mode, which I've configured for the car to start whenever there's charge in the battery in fully electric. And this little plunger comes out so you can go wide open throttle in electric mode without kicking on the combustion engine. You can push through that false floor though. However, in this particular car, I'm not really feeling it. So I don't know if it's just broken or if I have a weird combination of settings, but I've pulled up this little gauge that tells me how much electric juice I can go before it kicks on the combustion engine. And we are not using uh, nearly, you know, half of it just to drive around normally, especially inching in traffic. So it's no big deal. Um, so, so Porsche gets the plug-in hybrid thing. What I'd like to do is maybe throughout the trip we can hit some twisty roads as well and talk about how they use that plug-in system to gain performance. But what we're doing now is we're entering a roundabout. We are going to be going all the way left, full left. Well, we'll just kind of inch our way around. Rear steer makes this thing nimble for quite a large car. It looks right at home in New York City. A Panamera is a very New York car. And being plug-in hybrid, we're not contributing to uh, poor air quality and inner city emissions, which is great because that's one of the benefits of, of electric or plug-in stuff. It's just reducing emissions in the city so people can breathe easier. I know I sound like an environmentalist when I say all that, but I really hate breathing in garbage exhaust. So here we're not contributing, at least locally. Uh, great. Well, we got uh, 27 minutes to go four miles. Wish us luck. We'll see you over at the croissant place and we'll take a look at how much uh, juice we pull. So four miles, 50% on the nose. Let's see how this goes. We got our AC seats on, AC blasting. All the stuff is going. Welcome to New York City. We are just knifing through traffic in the Panamera. Rear steer getting us through. It had taken a half hour to get here. So that was a pretty accurate timing estimate. And we got uh, 0.5 kilowatt hours per mile, which is 500 watt hour per mile, which is fairly inefficient for like a Model 3 or as far as many electric cars go. And that is just the nature of a, it's actually less efficient than a Taycan would be. That is the, the nature of a plug-in hybrid. Unfortunately, um, they have to carry around a combustion engine and push through all the resistance of a transmission and then go down through a drive line. It's not an electric motor mounted on an axle. Volvo does it that way. Some of their new plug-in hybrids are interesting, but we got 0.5 kilowatt hour per mile, uh, which is again, uh, you know, what would that be? 0.5 kilowatt hour, two miles per kilowatt hour. And so fast air cleaning recirculation activated. Did you hit something, Anna? I did, but I unclicked it, <laughs> okay. yeah. Uh, and that was just including, you know, running AC at 65, which is a pretty aggressive setting with AC seats. You ran AC and heated seats. Yep. I like that German engineer. <laughs> that's right. And so I actually think we're going to pull into this little garage right here. What do you say? Oh, that's a good idea. 
Yeah, let's just wow, these zoom on in. Are tight. I programmed this button on the steering wheel right here to actually raise the suspension. Hotkey? Yep, yeah, hotkey. Let's see what this dude says. Hey there. Great, we'll head up. Um, so hotkey. So we did it. I mean, we spent 31 minutes sitting in the car in traffic and uh, didn't burn a drop of fuel. So like it did the thing. And here's a Volt on the right. I enjoyed it too. Let's do okay, this thing. Let's go. And now we're off to get some, well, actually, what's the name of the place we're going to? Uh, Angelina Bakery. I looked online at top bakeries and yeah, it's supposed to be really good. So we'll see. Okay, great. Let's check it out. Okay, check it out. This is what we came for right here. Damn. Special croissants, like what strawberry thing. I don't know, but you should get one. I don't know. It looks like I might turn into one of those. <laughs> yeah. Got all the goods here. I can't even choose. Hey there. Well, we got some food here. Anna, what do you think? I had one bite. It's delicious. And look at this. It's like a lemon mousse. So cool. So it's not a real lemon. No. Are you sure? I mean, I don't think so. We'll, we'll see. And a raspberry croissant. And I'm not sure what you get. Strawberry orb. And then some mozzarella and tomato sandwich. Mm. All right, we got some to-go boxes here. Yep. Nice. Saving that for later. Saving it for later. We're just yep. heading to the car. Just waiting for the Porsche to come up, but check this out. They do not accept expeditions or navigators um, or, yeah, because of engine fire risk. Huh. There's a bunch of different engines in them though, so they should be a bit more specific than just turning away all those models. I find that pretty interesting. It was like back in the day, bolts weren't allowed in parking garages. Now it's expeditions and navigators. Probably. We are now out of the parking garage and we are lowering back down. Love that suspension lift function. We got some napkins in case we spill something throughout the drive. And we need to put in navigation. Atlanta. So. Um, it's going to be one heck of a drive. We're going to get out on the open road, cover some distance. But uh, New York City is always a great place to start a road trip. It's where we start our cannonballs, not far from here, actually. And um, let's see, which way do we want to go? It wants to go through the scenic route. That is good with me. Maybe we even take this way the whole way. Um, Whatever you want. I really like this route. Uh, hold on. Which one am I thinking? This one over here. Yeah, that one's looking good. But we'll figure it out once we get, get out of town a little bit. We do need to make a decision here, but I'd much rather not go through DC and go through this way here. So, Plus, we might want to stop at a Porsche dealership in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. Right, Anna? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see. Let's go. And normally coming out of here, we're blasting at very high speeds, ready to across the country on a cannonball, but now we're just cruising at 55 miles an hour like normal people. Um, and uh, yeah, what a nice view it is. Tunnel really feels longer at lower speeds, that's for sure. But uh, I, I gotta tell you, I've seen some pretty interesting videos of guys just doing really stupid stuff in this tunnel going way too fast. But uh, we're just on a cruising road trip using the GT ability of the Panamera. And I should mention actually that I used to own a Panamera and what I owned was the previous generation, the real ugly one. Um, but I, I actually didn't mind that so much. It was the Panamera Turbo, so it was the fast one. And it was a ripper, the thing was great. And I covered some big distance in that car, at very high speed, very comfortable, did track days in it, surprisingly. And um, yeah, Panamera really actually was one of those cars that we started filming when we started out of spec. We didn't know we were gonna become a big EV uh, situation. So we ended up uh, filming the Panamera as one of our first ever videos. But we're actually in hybrid mode, I selected it, which will take into account our drive along this journey. And it will choose when it wants to use electric or combustion. And right now we're actually in full electric at the moment. Uh, even climbing this hill, it's chosen to do electric. So pretty smart system. We're gonna let it figure everything out. We're at about 40%, 30% uh, state of charge and I imagine we'll be on the lower end of the battery for most of the trip. Um, and as we get some distance on, I'll see kind of how this works out, how much room there is for boost. We do have the over boost function right here. So 
a lot of uh, interesting things to play around with here. Welcome to <laughs> the New Jersey Turnpike. We have filmed quite a few videos this past week up and down the New Jersey Turnpike, wouldn't you say, Anna? Yeah, we've been here a few times. Yeah, and um, why why have we spent so much time in New Jersey this week? I mean, like, I've lived here my whole life and I've never come to New Jersey, unless when I was working there. Oh my gosh, look behind us, there's an E-Transit. Film behind right? us. Yeah, that's an E-Transit. How cool is that? That's one of those, like, fueling vehicle situations. I think they're actually based in Denver, that company. I can't remember the name of it. Is it Flow? Hey, no, let's let them pass us. Oh, that's an Ikea? No, they have a different sticker. Fluid truck. There you go. It's 100% electric home delivery. Look at the dude. He's full sending it, too. He's ready to rip. He's got the race transit rocking. <laughs> Look at this thing. That's awesome. Look at him. He's going full throttle, full region. He's just preconditioning the battery to get faster charging right now. That is so freaking cool. Nice 911 right here. 911 Carrera 4S non-sport exhaust, which I actually prefer the look of. And what I can do is, since we have the combustion engine on, let me just make sure we're all up to temperature. We are. I'm going to deploy the smart response. Should we give it a go? We get 20 seconds of overboost plus electric boost, and it goes to like max rev. So, sport response pushed. So fast. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually like, this is the base Panamera, just so everyone knows. Can I like take it out? Oh, I can just keep resetting towards the sport response. But there we go. Now we're out and we'll put it back in the hybrid auto for the trip. Let's set cruise control. All right, there we go. Cruise set. Let's put it to, I don't know, 150 something. How fast will it let you set cruise control? 110, I love Porsche, they let you go fast on cruise. 130 miles an hour, adaptive cruise control, full Audi distance selected right on the tail. Time to road trip. Um, I forgot what I was talking about. Panamera, GT car, sport response, e-transit, doesn't matter. We're actually in electric mode again. Man, oh, I know what I was talking about. This is the slow one. This is uh, the base Panamera 4E hybrid. It's literally as slow as you can get one, and it's still actually pretty fast. It just rips into the triple digits like nothing. And so it's like you can go all out and go crazy turbo SE hybrid, which you know gets the big V8 with this hybrid system, which I would be into, of course. I don't actually know if I've ever driven the turbo SE hybrid before, but I'd love to have a go sometime. Um, and that to me seems like my kind of car because you can do big distance and then you have all the acceleration when you want it and full electric driving. I think the Panamera 4E Hybrid, this one's really good for like 99% of people. I'm one of those one percenters though. I like all the power. Uh, but wow, what a great seating position. What a nice view coming over here into New Jersey. Sarcasm. And um, yeah, all is all is good. I'm ready to cover distance. Anna, how are you feeling? Does a birthday road trip sound like your ideal way to spend a birthday? It does, if it includes good food like we've already had. Right, and it's actually 2 p.m., so we're leaving quite late in the day. Yep. But we spent all day in the city, all morning. Yeah, so it was great. Was, now I'm really having fun. the best birthday. Good, good. Well, let's, uh, let's continue. We're in eighth gear, fully electric, cruising along. We'll indicate a pass. Does a little acceleration going into the left lane. This one doesn't have no drive or lane centering, but it does push you in if it hit a line. I'll demonstrate here. We've now hit a line and it's pushed us in. And take a look at this. We've got a plane coming in overhead, coming into Newark. New York is a convoluted and uh, happening place. A lot of energy here always. And uh, can't wait to get out of it. Oh, Model Y with a flat tire. Bummer. Man, we could just do like a one video clip vlog the whole way south. Yeah, you could. You can talk non-stop. <laughs> <laughs> you get tired of holding the camera? No. Okay. Well, let's rock and roll. We'll see you all. I don't know. We got 450 miles of fuel range and about 10 miles of electric range. So we have 460 miles of range. And by the way, I've been driving this car the last two days and haven't filled it up. So crazy. Just efficient. Let's, uh, let's cover some distance. response and then we are good 
Uh, oof, made it out of that one alive. <laughs> we are That's nearing fun. Mechanicsburg, where we are heading to do something quite special. There's a reason I selected this route. Anna, would you like to tell the viewers what the reason is? Well, we saw that there's a Porsche dealership there that has a few used Taycons that we're interested in. So we're going to take a look and maybe drive one. Right, we're going to go take a look at one in particular that Anna has put a deposit on last yes. week. Yes. Um, and so we knew we were going to be doing this drive and we said, hey, how cool is that? It just happens to be right on the way to Atlanta. So let's go take a look at this one. We'll tell you about that car a little bit. The initial sort of glance will be in this vlog. Uh, but how cool is it? We're taking a Porsche to go look at a Porsche. Yeah. What is life? <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it? So uh, yeah, Anna drives like an old Civic and even before I met her, she was wanting an electric car. Yeah, I, well, I was already trying to get a Model 3, um, but I wanted the long range, non-performance, and last year they didn't have that available anymore at the end of the year, so I was on the waiting list for that, and then I've just learned a lot more about other electric vehicles, like it's not just Tesla, so yeah, I fell in love with the Taycan, and hopefully it drives well, and we'll see, we'll yeah, check it out. It's pretty similar to uh, this Panamera, actually. Which I like, yeah. It's very interesting using this hybrid mode, by the way, in this, where every time I lift off, especially going downhill, you'll notice it shuts the engine off. And we still have four miles of range, just about, I don't know, 15% state of charge or so. And I can just keep it on gentle acceleration like this, and then I can go past and kick on the combustion engine. So it gives you a tiny bit of electric mode, electric throttle in this hybrid auto. However, I can put it into full electric, drain the battery, and we can go up to 140 kilometers per hour. What's that, 80 miles an hour almost? Uh, in full electric mode. Uh, but in hybrid, it really balances uh, the efficiency of it. So it uses the combustion engine at high speed, and then the electric motor at city speed. My plan is we're about 30 miles away from the, the Porsche dealer. With a plug-in hybrid, we are going to plug in at every opportunity. We're gonna be those people. So we're gonna plug in the Panamera at Porsche Mechanicsburg, and which is like, I think a pretty small dealer, but they have a ton of used Taycons. Yeah, they have like 11. This one that we're going to look at is a rear wheel drive with 6,000 miles, and it's certified for six years, unlimited mileage warranty. Uh, one owner car, the guy who's we've been talking to actually sold the car originally so it wasn't a press car or anything like that um yeah so we it, it all seems pretty good neptune blue on on limestone we've got a lot to explore yeah fingers crossed fingers crossed it all looks good and everything but that's that's part of the trip is uh taking the panamera to go look at this thing i think anna you were saying this car has the 14-way seats the only thing you'd like more out of this is massage seat oh yeah Same that's true i mean it's uh, not it's not necessary, and it's not even that good, you know, car massage seats, right. but you, it's nice to have sometimes yeah. on long drives. Sure, I agree. The seating position in a Porsche is perfect for me. They're all great. I don't know why, but I was driving the Lucid the other day, and I was just kind of frustrated sitting in that car. I didn't like the seats. I didn't like that I was, like, sitting up here and, like, never felt fully comfortable in that. The steering wheel was super thick. This is a nice thin steering wheel my elbow is here my thumb hits right there which is exactly where I like it and uh, I'm just in full comfort mode I got my paddle shifters right here so I can you know bring it down the box if I want to foot down up the revs just put on the speed with the electric boost it's freaking awesome we're actually in Hershey Pennsylvania right now Ooh. but we are not stopping because I don't like chocolate I love chocolate. You want to stop? <laughs> no, we have so many sweets we in the car. Get this Porsche. Yep. Let's go, guys. Take a look. That's the Porsche dealer right there. And uh, man, I can see it right by the DC fast chargers. Really? Yeah. Let's go to the light here. Let's go find this thing. Standing oh. on the brake pedal. Oh. We'll hit first gear. Wait for everyone to spin around. The two-one downshift in this car is not phenomenal. I like the sound. Yeah, even for the, the V6, which is like kind of an everything, it's pretty good. They have a Rivian R1T in limestone, or maybe it's a customer car, but look at oh. it, there it is. All those wheels. The Rivian's aired out in like conserve mode, plugged into the Porsche charger. There she is. Damn, looks so good. The wheels do look good. 
I'm gonna see if I can plug this thing into the uh, steal some power. Steal some power. I don't know if the cable. I might have to back it in, but let's go take a look at it. Okay. And then I'll plug this thing in. And here it is, parked by the Porsche DC fast chargers. Porsche dealers really are getting quite a few of these. We'll have to do a rate your charge update, but. Man, this thing is looking good. So to walk you through the spec, this is a base rear wheel drive Taycan with the big battery upgrade. So 93.4 kilowatt hour gross capacity, 270 kilowatt charging, rear motor, of course, 21 inch wheels, Neptune on limestone, adaptive cruise control, no glass roof. Uh, so it's really an enthusiast sporty spec, if you will. The limestone's looking nice on the inside. We'll have to look a little bit deeper at that, make sure nothing is crazy going on here. About a $108,000 sticker. They're selling it for around 80 grand with only 6,000 miles. Uh, so pretty good deal. It looks like they just washed it, which it really needed a wash. Um, also, I don't know, I think maybe we have to upgrade to the Euro side markers would look pretty cool. And we ought to take the front license plate bracket off because that is just not it. But um, nice Panamera Sport Turismo over there looking awesome. This spec is great. Our Panamera really doing a great job here. And then they have this Rivian R1T, which the 12 volt must have died because I'm looking at these uh, 12 volt jump starters. There's some in the back and the front to get the truck to wake up. There's also been a bug recently on some Rivians. Uh, where they actually die, but it looks like it's sold. So this must have been a used inventory unit. But uh, man, our Panamera has been great. It ripped over here, no problem at all. And what do you say, Anna? You like the way your car looks? Yeah, it looks great, especially now that it's washed. Yeah. Now that it's washed, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it looks. Hopefully the interior looks good. Yeah, we gotta gotta ask the guys to open it up, say hi to everyone. Yeah and let's go do the thing. We might actually hang out here for the rest of the day into tomorrow because we gotta wait for money to transfer if yeah. you decide to buy it. It's going slowly. Going nice and slow, <laughs> yes, so. Um, cool, well, we got options, but there you go. We'll let you know what happens. Man, it's looking good. All right, we are just gonna go and plug in the Panamera here. Looks like Anna's taking some photos or video of her Taycan over here. Let's try not to run into her. And um, yeah, we're saying it's her car. It's not her car yet. We do want to drive it. She's never driven a Taycan. So we're going to spend a little bit of time making sure it's the right car the next few hours. And you know, worst case is if it's not the right car, we just don't get it. So that's kind of, that's where our head's at right now. I'm just backing this thing in down next to the Rivian. So let's get it over here, get it plugged in, charging on the level two. And that'll be that, boom, into park. Perfection. We'll lift up on the parking brake so it doesn't just sit on the parking paw. Car off. Typical Porsche on the left side. Love that. Love the magnetic door stopper so you can open the door anywhere. And ABC, right? So, boom. We'll take this. Unravel. I think we're going to need to full unravel. Man, that thing sounds good. And let's see, come on, in we go. Looks like this little jackets. Ah, now it's looking good. Sometimes you need to put a code in with these. These are just unbelievably expensive chargers, but we are plugged in and it is not charging yet, but we'll give it some time. If it needs a code to activate, we'll get the code and get it juicing. Well, you join us inside the Taycan and uh, wow, this thing is looking good. What do you think, Anna? I love it so far, yeah. What is your opinion about not having the glass roof? I mean, I would prefer it for sure, but um, it's a bit quieter without it, so. Yeah, definitely quieter without the roof. Yeah. We're at 94%. I just drove it a little bit and, um, you know, did, took it on a three or four mile, just quick jaunt uh, mm -hmm. up and down the road and thought it felt pretty good and did a skid. And so all good, does the Porsche thing. It's not uh, wildly fast. Yeah. No, it's more smooth. Like, it, it doesn't make me nauseous when you press the pedal, which I like. Right. We did a couple like of launch here. controls. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, all is good here. So, we have you in full comfort mode with a little bit of regen. Yeah. So, what do you say? You put it in drive and let's go. Okay. Your first time driving a Porsche? No. <laughs> I've driven Porsche. No, I have to go further back. See, this is too... You're too close. Yeah, you said it. You got to get in a racing position. We'll do that later. Okay. Your first few inches. Yeah. Look great. at all the Tycons they have. I know, look at that 
frozen blue wagon. I like it, but it's on the bad wheels. Okay. Yeah, I got good wheels on this. Yeah, the wheels on this look incredible. Okay, so it's like loose steering. Damn, you're really hitting the brakes. Oh, I thought I was supposed to be testing them. <laughs> no, not, not like that. I mean, just like getting used to the feel for okay. light braking. I was it's doing a little the hard bit. braking, yeah. Yeah, you were doing some hard braking. I mean, you do whatever you need to do. But I, I love the sound. Right, and it doesn't even have the electric sport sound. It just naturally sounds. Yeah, that's sounds. weird. I love this natural sound. Yeah, it's very cool. Okay, which way? To the right, and then a left at the light. Oh yeah, the right. braking is something to get used to. For sure. And then when you come to a stop, you can actually push in the brake pedal pretty hard, mm -hmm. quickly. Yeah, just did it. Uh, lift off the brake pedal, mm -hmm. and then just push it. There you go. Now you're in hold. Oh. So you don't have to keep your foot on the brake anymore. That is so nice. I like that. I get so tired of that. Yep. Yeah, so you just get it in hold, and then the car will hold you right there. Perfect. All right, well, we're going to drive around a little bit, and then Anna will give you her thoughts after a minute. <laughs> She's testing something out. Hopefully not any big skids. Is that her version of doing donuts in a parking lot? <laughs> This is how Anna test drives a car. She drives in a parking lot, <laughs> drives two miles an hour around. Look at the handling and performance of that. Wow, the on limit grip is amazing, isn't it? Yeah, it's great. I like the turning radius. Yeah, it turns really sharp. I think yeah. sharper than the all wheel drive cars, it feels like to me. Yeah, I'm gonna do some fast now. Okay, maybe after you buy the car. <laughs> well, we just finished up the test drive, and I got to say, the car is driving pretty good. There's a couple little issues with, uh, actually, just the front left tire has a little bit of a gouge in it that we noticed that the dealer offered to pay for new tires, so that's a great uh, solution. I don't actually even see it. On the bottom side? Yeah, I think it's on the bottom. Just a little nick in the sidewall, nothing major. Yeah. Probably just dinged a curb there. These uh, chargers are actually offline here at the dealer, which is a bit unfortunate. But uh, Anna, you drove it. You did your parking lot test. Yes, did I the... did speed test. I made you nauseous. Yeah, yes. she ripped it. You yes. were sending it down the back road. That's how I test it. Yeah. We noticed that um, the brake pedal was a little squishier it than was, I've experienced. You to really push it down far. Yeah, so further than I expected. And I think what they're going to do is just bleed the braking system in the yeah. morning, put new brake fluid in it. Yeah. I think actually what happened was they did the two-year service as part of the CPO program and they didn't bleed the brake fluid properly. So yeah. they're going to redo that. They, they're they going to try and degrease the steering wheel. Yeah. I love the steering wheel though. You it love the steering great. wheel. Yeah, it's small. I like it. Yeah. It's beautiful. Good materials. And so overall, I mean, do you see yourself driving this? It's a, yeah. obviously a big purchase going it, from the Civic. First big car purchase or big purchase in general yeah yeah biggest purchase ever <laughs> yeah i know it's it's scary yes <laughs> but i think it's the right decision i love this car and i feel like it matches me really well yeah and you even got your nails you want to show everyone oh yeah it doesn't match it doesn't match no. oh no <laughs> it's okay. A little darker next time. <laughs> right. But overall, I mean, look, 270 kilowatt charging, big battery, easy 250 miles of range. I've tested 297 on this car at 70 miles an hour. Yep. No sunroof on this one, which That's is performance okay. yep. oriented, but not comfort. What do you think? I mean, I'm not used to having a sunroof, so it's okay. <laughs> so it's okay. The yeah. limestone interior, I really like. Yeah, for me, I have to get used to it. I yeah. feel like it might be a bit of an old person color but well we can always change it out with black seats no it's fine <laughs> um, but overall i mean i think it's really a good car they always say this is the first porsche uh you know not necessarily the only porsche so we think this is a great way to start out yeah i love porsche and it's an electric vehicle so it just makes sense yeah absolutely well what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait for your money to transfer this is the hold up otherwise we would have taken it now yeah. we're waiting for uh money to get transferred between banks then we'll come hopefully tomorrow afternoon with a check, yeah. which means we can hang out in Mechanicsburg, which, have to do. which there's nothing to do around here. Maybe we can do a performance drive of the Panamera, perhaps a range test. Okay. 
We got some things we can do. Yeah, I'm hungry though. You're hungry, I'm hungry. Let's find a hotel, let's get some dinner, and then we'll be back here in the morning to take delivery of that, assuming all goes well. Yay. Yay. <laughs> well, we just had a pretty good Indian dinner at this uh, Tika something or other Tika place. Tika Shack. Tika Shack, yeah. and it was awesome. It was awesome. And was you're, awesome. you're attempting to drive the uh, Panamera yeah. Very slowly on some We're back roads. We're taking good care of this car. Yes. And at least in my hands. I'm not going to crash it. That's right. Uh, but but I wanted you to get a feel of this versus the Taycan. Yep. Just, uh, and for some reason you really prefer the interior of this. Yeah, I don't know why. I kind of like this and I like the black leather more. The black leather more than at the limestone. At least for now. I think I'll get used to the limestone. Yeah. Yep. I prefer the limestone. but And I do like it, especially with the blue just need some getting used to. I've always had black seats. Sure. Well, we're in e-power mode. We got a fully charged battery and we're heading to our hotel only six miles away. So let's do it. We are pulling up to the Spring Hill Suites right now. And what do you think of the drive, Anna? It's incredibly smooth and the brake is really good. Take a look here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six charging points all along. Um, I would say we don't need to charge because we're just going over to the Porsche dealer. We have way more than 50%. We're this good. thing does like well over 30 miles on a charge. Pretty okay. good, actually. Yeah. And uh, even if we go out tonight or do whatever, and oh my God, look what's here. What? Oh. <laughs> Texas Roadhouse. Your favorite. Hell yeah, brother. Uh -huh. We picked a good hotel. Yeah. Yeah, nice work, Anna. Actually, I picked this one. Oh yeah, you're right. You found it, but it's my favorite type. Yeah, Spring we love Hill. the Spring Hill Suites. We stay at them all the time. Yep, my favorite. Let, um, let's Porter. back it in here on the end so no one dings it. And there we go. That's what I'm talking about. A proper hotel parking spot. Stuffed up next to a corner, back in the corner, all the way back in. That is ultimate parking. We'll get our stuff out. We'll get checked in and then... Uh, you know, Anna, I'm thinking we should celebrate your birthday by getting a beer at the Texas Roadhouse. Okay. <laughs> we can do that. I mean, I don't know if you're ready for that kind of celebration. Fancy. <laughs> yes. Only yeah, the nicest that's, place. That sounds great to me. Okay, great. Well, that's what we'll do. Okay. We don't have to drive. We can just drink. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Just walk over. Yeah. <laughs> and now a good morning to you. We have slept in, worked a little bit this morning, got some breakfast, and... Uh, Unfortunately, the Taycan is not ready for us yet. They found, I don't know, it seems a little bit late to me, but they just did a check on the tires. We knew one of them had a gouge and we were like, ah, oh, we'll get a new tire when we get back to Colorado. They were gonna discount the car, the Taycan, a thousand bucks for that. And then they found out the other tire had a plug in it. And I'm like, guys, didn't you do a CPO inspection on this thing? Anyway, now they're saying it needs two new tires on the front and they won't let us take delivery until they're both fixed as per Porsche CPO. So I get they're trying to follow standards. We're gonna run over there and just figure out the money side of the transaction, but we may not be able to take delivery until tomorrow. Um, it looks like the trunk, she didn't pack it properly. <laughs> I don't know, something's sticking out over here. Um, so we're gonna jump in the Panamera. It's where we left it last night and we are going to, I don't know, it's, uh, it's 11 a.m., it's pretty late. 9 a.m. our time. So let's run over to Porsche and we'll get Starbucks on the way and figure out what the heck is going on. I do wish that this car would tell you its state of charge as soon as you open the door. I think that could be really nice, a nice touch, if you will. But let's jump inside. Let's take a look at the gauges. Whoa, in we go. Car on, we're over 50%. We didn't even use any combustion yesterday getting to our hotel. So like you can do quite a bit of electric driving in this thing. Pretty interesting. Are you all situated? Yeah. Good? Yep. Heated Let's seat? Go. Yep. Okay, on. I don't think this one has heated steering wheel. All right, in the drive. We still got 300 miles of range on fuel. <laughs> Crazy. But I think we can pinch these together and get a nice glass roof experience this morning. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. It's just dinging. There we go. All right, let's go see what's going on with your car. Yeah. We are now arriving. We stopped at Starbucks, got some Starbucks. Of course. And, um, you know, we had a really complicated, busy week this week. Uh, but I think we're actually going to cancel 
this event we were going to with Ford in Tennessee, just because if this is going to take an extra day, there's no way we can make it to Atlanta and then over there in time. So uh, even now would be pushing it. So I'm going to call them, let them know we can't make it. And uh, that gives us some flexibility. It gives us a couple days to get to Atlanta, and then we got to blast straight to Phoenix. Cannonball. Oh, no. Do we actually have to? Um, we're going to have to cover some distance. Oh, but, shoot. But good thing you got 270 kilowatt charging. Yeah, but, you know, I like my brakes. <laughs> I like your brakes, but I'm going to be driving the whole way. I still like my brakes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll see how good of a road tripper the Taycan is. Yeah, that's true. Because we're about to go on a double the mileage on the car almost. It's only got yeah. 6,000 miles in the last and year that's, and And that terrifies me, doubling the mileage. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> I yeah. still want it to be new. Yeah, well, you still bought the car right. I mean, every other used Taycan in this pricing category at 20, 30, 40,000 miles, yours only has six and it's warrantied for unlimited miles mm -hmm. for six years. So just send it. Um, so I don't think you uh, explained why it's taking an extra day, right? I think I did. I let our viewers know about the tires. Oh, okay, they also good. said their Rivian completely died on them. It's oh, a yeah. software update going around now that makes them die. And um, yeah, I'm gonna plug this thing back in. So we went from here to our hotel to go oh, to dinner then our hotel drove over to starbucks and back to here and we still have 10 20 30 percent remaining on the battery so how sick is that i guess i gotta go all the way over this way so that's a pretty bad software bug in the rivian <laughs> yeah that's, <laughs> yeah, that's like worse than the lucid <laughs> what's happening is the the high voltage battery isn't charging the 12 volt battery so, Oof. well, I figured we can get some work done here while we yep. can, and I think just us being here will put some pressure on everyone to get this car moving quicker. It'll just be a constant reminder. Plus, we can look over in the service bay, which Ooh, is kind of cool. Yeah, that is cool. Yeah. Okay. So we're here. Let's charge this thing up. We'll get the free juice, much as much electric driving as possible. Got our Excedrin. You guys know I get migraines. That's like made for this car. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's rock and roll. Well, we just uh, have been here most of the day. It's now, what is it, five o'clock? It's 4.55, but we're lucky because we're getting those tires today. Right, so the they're pulling the tires off of a new car on the lot. Yeah. Really cool of them to get us Very going. Cool. They yeah. bled the brake fluid. They aligned the car. Yeah, I saw them. Yeah, yeah so they did great. a bunch of stuff. And we've been sitting here um, getting insurances. Yeah, we've been shopping out. insurance, which has been insane. It's a pain, yes. Um, so they quoted me like $1,200 per month in one place, and I found most of them around $600, $500. Which is still and unbelievable. I'm never having a ticket or accident, so it's really weird. But, but what'd you end up with? Uh, I think I found $250. Yeah, pretty good for the same well, coverage. It's good, yeah. Yeah, but it was pretty crazy. So yeah. now we are getting it all sorted. Well, it is now raining, stormy, and dark outside, and hopefully you guys would have checked out the out-of-spec reviews video that we shot picking up Anna's Tycon, but here it is. She's in the car. We just filmed a whole delivery process. These guys really were great. I mean, they gave her so many gifts, so many things. They're adding Inno Drive to the car at no cost. I mean, they really... Uh, hooked her up, I would say. They were great experience, and she is thrilled. Um, so now I'm in the Panamera. She's in the Taycan. We're just getting ready to go. It's 8.15 p.m., and now's like we're a day behind schedule, so we need to rip it to Atlanta. The plan right now is to drive as far south as we feel comfortable tonight, given rain, thunder, and she's in a brand new car that she doesn't really know that well. So we're just gonna get on the highway and cruise gently, let her get comfortable with everything. And maybe we'll stop towards Roanoke, Virginia is kind of what I'm thinking. It's about three hours away. Um, you know, that'll put us about 11 p.m., maybe a stop for dinner and a charge in the Taycan. If we can get there before midnight, that would be great. And maybe we'll even get out of this rain because this rain's pretty brutal. This storm's brutal. So, um, yep, I'm curious to see her thoughts on everything. So we'll, we'll head over to Anna and see what she thinks about her Taycan. But other than that, we are ready to uh, hit the road and head south. So let me show you all the gauges on the Panamera and the Taycan's at 85% state of charge. 
And uh, so so we got a long distance we can go here without refill refueling or recharging. Absolutely storming right now, as you can probably hear. There's thunder, lightning, rain, all of it. And I'm about to start the first leg of this trip all on my own in this Taycan that I just purchased from the Porsche here in Mechanicsburg. Great experience. I'm so excited to drive. All right, let's throw this thing in the drive and let's head out. We have decided to go to Chili's for dinner. There's actually not many food choices around here. And we went to uh, a good Indian place last night. Crazy that we've been here for well over 24 hours to get this car, but that is sometimes the process when you find a car and they need to make a few things to get it right. But uh, all is good. She's paid for it. That's her car. We're rolling. We're going to Chili's to celebrate. It's a mile in the wrong direction. I think we can spare that. So we are both pretty hungry. 8.30 p.m. It is just pouring rain out right now. Just unbelievable. So, um, Yep, let's rock and roll. The Panamera engine, we've been driving around a ton, by the way, hasn't turned on in uh, over a day. We've just been plugging it in and going wherever we go. So the plug-in hybrid thing can actually work. Look at this, first time the engine has kicked on in, and it went right up to 3000 RPM, I'm super gentle throttle. The first time the engine has kicked on in over 24 hours, crazy. I'm actually gonna go rear fog here uh, because, wow, this is some gnarly conditions. I do not think we should be driving in this. So we'll see if it's still like this after Chili's, we might just stay at the same hotel we did last night with all those chargers. It was a pretty good one. So you can see it is absolutely storming out right now and we are gonna take a quick break and get some dinner at Chili's. Here, leaving Chili's and the rain has stopped. Thank goodness. Yep. You like it's actually in New York car, so let's go. And we just booked a uh, we just booked a hotel in Harrisonburg, Virginia, or close to it, Woodstock, I think. Yes. And uh, it's two hours yeah. on the nose, 100, 139 miles. I can do that. You no have enough sense. range. They have, uh, I think, six charging stations, and actually, Blink coming in hot, really putting a lot of chargers in in this area. Uh, it's like 39 cents a kilowatt hour and they tell you real time status. So we know five of six are available. So we'll probably be able to charge both cars. If there's plenty open, I might charge this thing up. We'll see. I'm excited to charge my car. I don't know why, but it's exciting. Yeah, you. we haven't charged your car yet. Uh, you have, no, I plugged it in at Porsche, but yeah. it didn't work. Yeah. Right, because the charger yeah. was dead. Yeah. <laughs> so we don't know if it charges. Well, I'm sure it does because it was at 99% yesterday. Yeah, they, they yeah. charged it up for sure. What are you trying to do here? I'm waiting for you to open. Oh, the button's right under here. I just... You don't want to touch it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was going to have you press it on it. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks for finding the iPhone cable. We're uh, going to hit the road and see what happens. Pulling out of Chili's. We're in Sport Plus. I'm warming up the engine because we're going to need real speed. Um... 139 miles get there at midnight it's really 10 p.m mountain time although i think we might be getting adjusted to east coast time here this car does not have inno drive or um active lane keeping but it does have lane departure so it'll push me back in if i hit a line and of course adaptive cruise control and anna's car we are going to purchase all that stuff to be added probably tonight so that it's ready for the drive tomorrow so we'll have lane centering for the rest of the trip but for now she's going to do 140 miles without any lane centering and just really get to feel out her car which i think is kind of important and kind of cool you'll notice since we're in sport plus it's actually rapidly charging up the battery pack so i'm going to go into sport and there we go i can hear the load come off the engine as well we don't need to be charging up the the high voltage battery for a cruise down the highway we'll charge it up maybe at the uh, hotel tonight so we'll wait for her to get all set up and we'll, uh, we'll cruise just to show you guys a little bit more of a high level map view. I think I can show you, I've never really used Waze. My dad's such a Waze fan. So this is kind of what we're thinking. Just on the, I don't know. We used to do this stretch back to college, I-81 stretch. A lot of cops in Virginia. Do not speed in Virginia. I know that much. We are now out on the open highway and look who's coming up alongside is Anna in her Taycan. Absolutely having fun with it, it looks like. Uh, we were just ripping around on some back roads and man, the Panamera and Sport Plus when you do a launch control is 
hilariously aggressive for being the base car. This thing rips. So I think Anna is absolutely sending it in her tie cut. <laughs> she needs to be uh, careful, but she's never had a ticket in her whole life. Uh, maybe she deserves a ticket or two and gets, uh, gets to have some fun behind the wheel. So I'm glad she's enjoying it. I am uh, back down now into hybrid auto at the moment, just cruising along nicely. And um, yeah, man, what a great evening. The rain is gone, roads are dry. Time to cover some distance, hunker down and do what these cars are made to do, which is do some big miles. Welcome to West Virginia. Wow, it's so wet out with all this rain. The camera couldn't even focus on anything but the windshield and the wipers are on max. We are going 65, nice and easy and slow. And is right back here. But wow, the conditions are brutal, truly brutal. We are now nearing our exit and what a pretty treacherous drive that was. 0.2 miles away, love the full screen car play, love all the lighting stuff here at night, super nice in the Panamera. And um, yep, looks like our hotel is a right and then uh, exit right, make a left, make an immediate right. And we are gonna charge the battery up. You'll see the little green things go as we, as I touch the blended brake pedal. Love the very 918 style gauges here. Um, Anna, I think, got lost in the dust. So let's hope she doesn't miss her exit, which um, I don't see her getting off behind me. So, okay, I don't, uh, perhaps that's her getting off. Let's hope so. Anyway, um, off to the hotel and we'll go plug in the car, see how that all looks and then uh, go from there. But look at this, still driving in electric, even though I, I did put it in e-power mode to burn all the juice. I'm pretty sure Anna missed the, uh, missed the exit because that's a pickup truck. Um, so let me call her and tell her where we're at and then we'll figure this thing out. But uh, what was I gonna say? Yeah, I put it in e-power to burn the battery for the last little bit of the highway drive and then it switched to hybrid once it ran out of battery. That way we can charge it up tonight. And you now join us at Hampton Inn and in Suites. A pretty rainy drive, but the weather here is perfect. Uh, Anna also has arrived. She just went one exit too far, but just got here. We hooked both cars up to the chargers. You can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six blink chargers. Although only a few of them seem to be fully operational. You can see that one has a dead screen, but then a green glow. This one all the way on the end, same thing. We, we actually didn't know the charger number, so we couldn't activate that particular one. So we ended up using this charger right here to plug in the Taycan. It's after midnight, probably no one else will be getting here anyway and um, you know they, there's an open spot here that works perfectly so that's why I decided to plug in the plug-in hybrid which typically I wouldn't but um, yeah no, no big deal especially with this many chargers available so we are charging the Taycan and I think we're charging the Panamera the Panamera doesn't tell me how fast it's charging it just gives me a time estimate and I've never really seen this flash like this really quick and strong and the blink charger is frozen on that screen. Unlike Anna's situation here, which tells me all the good details, 16 kilowatts, all that stuff. So I'm not, <laughs> we're getting a very inconsistent experience, but the Taycan's getting 9.6 kilowatts, which is maxing out its onboard charger, charging great. It says it'll be done at 8.16 in the morning. She arrived at, I don't know, 14% or 18%, something like that. And uh, we're just getting our bags out of the Panamera and we are going to go to bed. And tomorrow's Friday, which means Inside EV's podcast. Is that an early, morning? early. Actually, I think we might be doing it in the afternoon. We'll have to play around with it. I don't know. I think it's delayed for some reason. But um, yeah, you all right? What are you just holding the cable? Yeah, it's because I can't pick this up. It's too heavy with one arm. Oh, no problem. And I I'll, don't want to put stuff I'll get all there. this stuff. Okay. Oh, we're saving the charge port here. I yeah. see. Okay, thanks. Let's, uh, let's go to bed. We'll see y'all in the morning. Good night. Charging our two Porsches here. Good morning. Hi. <laughs>
you full charged your Tycon. First day of ownership, I fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's only because both you and I can't figure out how to set a charging limit. Yeah, I and mean, I'm gonna need to figure that out because I really not want to do that. I think we go out uh, this door here, Hampton Inn. Uh, how was the breakfast, Anna? Um, yesterday was much, much better. It's Spring Hill Suites. Yeah, so I mean, Hampton Inn, great charging experience, but maybe not so much. I mean, the chargers are broken too, so I don't know. I think I that. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, uh, the Model 3 has left. It looks like your uh, Taycan is still charging. Really loud with the highway right here. So let's check out the cars and then we'll look at the plan. It is raining again today. All right, well, let's take a look at the charge level on everything. I'm pretty sure the Panamera is fully charged. Even though we were getting that weird blink and no data from the charge point or the blink charger, excuse me, I am fairly certain if we just crank this thing on, Let's see, uh, fully charged, how about that? Looking nice. If we look over here at the Ticon, and I just unplugged it, here's all the data. Cost us $29 to charge at 39 cents per kilowatt hour. We added or delivered 76 kilowatt hours to it. That is expensive. Ah, well, you got a big battery. Ah, uh, okay. Um, and not a non-power charge port. It's at 100. It's is, at 100. Which is very sad. Hello. The latch is right here, so okay. sometimes you just gotta push Oops. right in the middle. Okay, I'm gonna not do that next time. Okay, let's take a look. Yeah, 100%. 100%, 242 miles, and you were ripping it last night. I was, yeah, I was having fun. So if you put your foot on the brake, again, that mileage is based off of your driving history. Okay. Um, maybe it's brake and seatbelt. The Taycan should automatically start, mm. I think. Unless maybe you did a manual shut off. That's the only reason I would think it may not. No. Now hit the brake. What the heck? We'll just hit the start button. There you go. Okay. 242 miles, 100% state of charge. We'll put in the nav, head towards Charlotte, North Kakalaki. And that's where we're headed to. So it's looking like to get to Charlotte, North Carolina. It's going to be about four and a half hours. It's 10 a.m. I do have to do the Inside EVs podcast, but it's delayed today, like I mentioned, until 1 something, 1.30, I think. Anna's just getting her music set up, her Apple CarPlay. She said she was having some issues with it. I may go over and help her figure it out. The uh, Taycan, what are we in? We're in the Panamera, uh, starts up an e-power when you have a charged battery. I'm going to switch us to hybrid auto. And um, actually, what would make the most sense, to be honest, is to use the in-car navigation, because this should hold electric driving on the highway. There's a charge mode and a hold function. It should know to hold on the highway. And then when we get into Charlotte, burn electric. But because there's so much electric range here, I'm kind of curious to see how the system just automatically goes without using um, any of the cool trickery here. So I'm actually gonna be using the CarPlay Waze, which does not transfer over to the car system. So this is just pure hybrid. The car doesn't know where it's going. Oh, I accidentally knocked my pocket here where I have keys and I've opened the rear trunk. What the heck? Okay, let's close that. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. So I guess I'll put the keys carefully back into my pocket and probably go over and help Anna set up CarPlay. Let's see what's going on. Hey. Hey. So what's, uh, what's going on in here? I got CarPlay up, but for some reason it was connecting to my phone and then disconnecting. I don't know why, but it's up now. It's working now? Yeah. It should be. No, it, see, it just did it It again. must be the cable. Yeah, it might be It's got to be the cable. My cables are always bad because my cat chews on them. I believe you can do wireless CarPlay, too. While Anna was setting up her Tycon and getting her work laptop connected to the car's hotspot, I went over to fill this thing up with fuel. So that is what we're doing right here. We are fully filled and we have 542 miles of predicted range on fuel and 27 on battery electric. So that's pretty good range, more than double than what the Tycon will do. So that just shows you how good of a road tripper this Panamera is. If you're covering distance, well, Maybe a full battery electric isn't the, the easiest or, or most optimal choice, but we're gonna run back over, collect Anna, and then hit the road. We'll be good to go. I should have set up my Porsche profile, but that's okay.
off we go then we are back we're full of fuel i'm warming up the drivetrain for just some electric uh i don't know boost action onto the highway just want to make sure everything's up to temp before we drive it hard and anna should be uh coming along here shortly sometimes i think she's still getting a little used to the car which is totally cool no rear windshield wiper in this panamera so actually kind of hard to see what's going on behind me but um we'll wait for her to catch up we got some hours to do today four hours 38 minutes to charlotte and then off to atlanta after that let's go munch some miles exiting off the highway here where I'm seeing some fire truck action over here. Oh no. Um, and a whole bunch of cars parked to the side. We'll get through this. Is the road closed? This is where we're heading to the charging station. So it looks like there's been an accident and we are going to be stuck here. What the heck? This is where we need to go and charge. Crash ahead. It is still here. Um, dang. I think we might be screwed. We, I gotta explain why we're stopping here to charge, and it's because Withville, which we would have normally gone to, which is you know another 40 miles or something like that, is actually um, closed offline. There's no other chargers between here and Statesville, so we have to stop a little bit early for the Tycon before getting to the charger. So I don't know what's going on here, but I, it kind of looks like they're trying to clear that Lexus out of the way. The fire guy's getting in there. So it's like we're about to pull up to our first charger stop. Hopefully, looks like it might be blocked. There, Kyle is in front of me. And here we are pulling in. We just passed a Rivian leaving. We got a Mach E, EV6, and Lightning. Just one spot available for Anna. So I am going to pull over here. We're going to see if plug and charge works for her, and that'll be that'll be that. Backing it up into the charger. Well, we have a full house here at Electrify America and we've just activated plug-in charge in the system on the Tycon. So let's see how this works. We have the new units. These are the SK Signet versions, which have been fairly reliable actually with the new uh, dispensers here. So let's see, cables, wow, we are out of winter time because these are easy to move around. Nothing like the minus 20 degree temperature we've been testing in Colorado. So we are plugged in. We have the Tycon in battery friendly quick charging mode just because we haven't been needing to do crazy uh, stuff. I guess, uh, and I just plugged in the car. We're gonna see if it plug in charges. Okay. And uh, could you not move the Panamera? No, I need the key. Oh, did it shut off? Yeah, it <laughs> well, let's see how this works. It says processing payment. Payment authorized. No way. What? Plug in charge, baby. That's, That's awesome. Great. Yeah, free. I'm only going to electrify that. Oh, you're yeah, charging to 100% every day. <laughs> um, there we go, 36 cents a kilowatt hour. But that is the new pricing. So I wonder if they have just updated from 31 cents to 36, or it could be a Porsche specific charging plan. But uh, yeah, very good. It looks like there might be some food here. Looking forward to trying that out. Thank you for choosing EA, you're welcome. The car still hasn't initiated charging yet. It's still going and it just went green, which is good. And I'm looking just on that screen right there. Maybe it's still, there we go. Initiated, 111 kilowatts. Look at that, 120. And this is with battery friendly quick charging and no battery preconditioning. We did not set this as our destination because again, we were planning to go to Withville before we found out it was offline. I think Anna cannot figure out how to drive a Panamera. You just turn it on, put it in drive and go. But uh, the, these things are difficult. So there we go. Ramping up 125 kilowatts or so. That's fine. We only probably need a 10 minute stop just to put a little bit of buffer in before we get to Statesville. All is good for the Tycon's first DC fast charging of this car's ownership. Maybe if it's life, we don't know if the previous owner ever did any of it. Probably not as what it kind of sounded like. So 
perhaps its first DC charge ever. Well, the Taycan charges so fast, even in battery-friendly quick charging, we're at 92% right now. I'm actually gonna stop us from charging. There's no need to full charge this thing right now. And uh, that is just the beauty of this car. It charges so freaking fast. So 21 minutes, we went from 50 to 90%, longer than we needed, of course. And uh, I mean, it's pretty much ready to go. So we won't uh, do anything to harm the car by doing a full charge. We'll just stop charging right there. And we'll be off to uh, Charlotte. We don't even need to stop in Statesville. We got enough juice to just head on what down. What a beautiful day. We are on and ready to go. So um, let's see. I guess we're heading straight to Charlotte. We'll go maybe see if we can see Brandon Flash, a good friend of ours there. Search for destination, city center Charlotte. Boom. Anna's got it in. So she'll get to Charlotte around 7% state of charge. That's plenty. And uh, she's got to get used to road tripping the out-of-spec way. Got a few different options here. They're all roughly the same time, but this one should be the fastest. So let's do that. 4.06 p.m. Maybe we'll have an early dinner. Maybe we'll stop for Starbucks along the way, something like that. I don't know. But we got enough range in this and enough range in that to make it there. So let's hammer down three hours. So here we go, just merging onto the highway. Let's go sport response. Man, they got that accident cleaned up pretty quick. And full send. <laughs> Rips the shifts. Anna's trying in the Tycon, but I think this is faster. Oh man, this thing boogies on the brakes. <laughs> this thing sounds good. Sport response should be done. There we go. And now we'll put it back into hybrid mode for cruising. It's all part of the fun. Love all the settings of this car. Lots that we can explore with it. Well, you join us here at a local Starbucks with some donks. That's how you know we're in the South. Hell yeah. We got the Tycon right here. I believe Anna's inside the Starbucks. I just finished up the Inside EVs podcast. So we are all good. Spent an hour and 10 minutes on the show. Delayed the trip a bit, but we really needed to do it. So uh, let's jump back in the cars and head south towards Charlotte. Well, we are just pulling out now. Uh, the Tycon, Anna just texted me, said that we'll be here at 3%. Sorry, we'll be arriving to Charlotte at 3%. So she's going to draft behind this and we are good to go. We're gonna run that Tycon down probably for the first time in its life. So let's pull out here while that bus is blocking traffic and uh, hammer down two hours, 45 minutes. We'll be there at 5.45. I think the plan will be to see Brandon Flash for dinner. Uh, Anna definitely is a cautious driver. She should, have, she should still go for it, but she's just waiting back there. So we'll pull in somewhere and wait for her to come out. So um, all good though. they will rather her be safe than sorry in the new Porsche. And uh, yep, pretty sweet. So we are just pulling off. We're gonna go to a Circle K real quick so I can go pee because I drink way too much water. Um, unfortunately, I only made it about an hour and a half but this should be a really quick stop and then we'll get back on the road to charlotte north carolina so kyle loaded up on the snacks i'm so hungry i don't know why I, well you ate breakfast this morning right yeah that's why yeah uh, we're in fancy gap virginia this is the perfect place to add some chargers there was a model y parked here so i just tagged our friend brandon who does some work with circle k for charging to say this is where you gotta put them yeah i agree both parked pretty far back here uh, it's because I'm trying to be careful. I don't know the front of my car yet. Yeah, it's long. It is long. Yeah. Pulling out of the Circle K, getting back on the road. Nice backup camera. That is something that I did not have in my 2012 Civic. Getting back on the road and heading over to Charlotte. So not sure what is going on. Oh, <laughs> looks like he's sending it. I'm a little scared to catch up with him. What I have discovered in this trip is that Virginia is filled with cops everywhere and that we gotta be real careful. I actually was going 80 in a 65 next to a cop and I was so scared that I was gonna get pulled over, but apparently I did not. I was, I was just fine. Welcome to North Carolina. We're getting closer. I am at 48% right now, 
and we're doing this out of spec style because at the destination it looks like I will arrive at 3% if everything goes as planned. Kyle is over here showing off his acceleration while I cannot because I am in range mode in the Taycan so I can't get much past 80 miles per hour and I gotta be careful since I'm arriving at 3% but at least Kyle's having some fun for me. Oh, they are ripping it over there while we are stuck in traffic. Check this out. Who knew North Carolina was so pretty? Somebody's boning out there. Wow. And it's a sunny day. Welcome to Lake Norman, just north of Charlotte. The Tycon in Neptune Blue matches the water perfectly and uh, got some boats out on the water over here to the left out cruising around love to see it beautiful day 85 degrees and sunny welcome to charlotte north carolina we are now in mecklenburg county and we are still about 40 miles away we are heading to south carolina to the rock hill circle k site that's where we're going to meet brandon it's just on the other side of charlotte it's actually not directly on the way to atlanta but i want to see this charging station so we're detouring slightly because i'm a nerd you can see it is actually pretty smart that the car saved all the battery all day today in hybrid auto and it's using it in electric mode i've rolled down the windows to enjoy this beautiful 85 degrees and sunshine we don't get this too often in colorado or at least not through winter so just windows down cruising in the panamera what a beautiful day welcome to charlotte north carolina so we are in charlotte north carolina and i am gonna get there in what looks like 42 minutes for 35 miles so we're obviously stuck in a bit of traffic but i'm thrilled with the performance of this tycon right now so i have it in um lane keep assist and it is keeping good distance I'm not pressing the pedal at all, it's doing all this on its own, and it is really quite smooth, it's not jarring stops and stop and go traffic, and I'm really happy with how this is going. So just pulled off the highway, and look at that, 9 miles left of range. Arriving to the destination at 4%, so exactly as I thought. <laughs> this is looking pretty good, Brandon, great suggestion. Yeah. And uh, location. very yeah. convenient. You really need a slow charging car here. <laughs> <laughs> you got to put in some like 40 kilowatt chargers so people can have dinner over here. <laughs> well, we just filmed a video here at Circle K. Hey, Brandon. Hello. And uh, see you guys. thank you for letting me use your truck for that video. No problem. Hopefully uh, when this video goes up on out of spec reviews, that will already be there. Yep. I took everyone on a tour of this experimental Circle K site, okay. if you will. Definitely check it out. Yep. Check out that video. If you're in the area, come and charge here. It's uh Honestly, everything worked great for us. It was a cool experience. The store is beautiful. The station's beautiful. So if you're passing through Charlotte, going south, like Savannah, Charleston, anywhere like that, this is the spot to charge. Yeah, this was really great. And uh, amazing how many people we saw charging here. Yeah. Just like a constant stream of cars. We charged up the Tycon. We charged up the Rivian. Yeah. Anna, you uh, left dinner to uh, unplug the Tycon. Yeah. at what state of charge 85 85 yeah She's, it went really quick yeah even in battery saving mode yeah. this thing charges like a monster but you didn't move the car from the charger <laughs> yeah, that's because i, I thought was we were going to be done quickly <laughs> and, uh, but you I'm ran right. out here let me just set the scene for everyone. And she gets one one pass and then never again. If you ever see anna blocking chargers you have full right to tow this thing out of a spot. Um, she had it parked there charging and then unplugged it and walked across to dinner. <laughs> Slowly across the street. She should have just moved the car over here. Yeah, over here, over there, over there. What was that about? My bad. <laughs> it wasn't that fast either. No, it took her forever. <laughs> yeah. All right, typical Tycon owner things over here. <laughs> but uh, I think that's a one mistake she'll never make again after we gave her enough shit for it. Yeah, you got to get gas in the Panamera and it's going to actually take you time because you have to like do it i know just walk away i know it's uh, i actually have to stand there and wait for it to fill up yeah, your hands dirty. yeah. yeah i have smelly hands your chargers have very nice 
handles on them and they're not they're ergonomic they're not smelly mm -hmm. you know cleaner people drive electric wow well, <laughs> maybe for now but as they get more general i don't think that will necessarily hold true i agree i agree so that's actually what i'll do is i'm gonna well i think i got 300 miles of range left at a half a tank <laughs> rub it in my joke yeah okay okay well i'm gonna jump in the panamera you're gonna jump in the tycon unless you want to switch no <laughs> and we're gonna head to towards Greenville, South Carolina, Spartanburg, Greenville, BMW land. Yes. I was thinking if we stop in Spartanburg, we could go to the BMW museum in the morning. Oh, that would be so cool. And then that way you don't have to go all the way to Atlanta either. That's and a no bit one, of a drive. Yeah, no one wants to go to Atlanta leaving at Saturday 9 p.m. Morning, it's too late. Yeah, Saturday morning in Atlanta is pretty minimal traffic too, so it's fine. If it was if this was a Thursday or a Friday, yeah. and you have to deal with rush hour traffic in Atlanta, no yeah. thanks. But Saturday, totally fine. Yeah. So I'm thinking we stop in Spartanburg for the night. Sounds good. Yeah. And uh, we'll, we'll look at hotels. Yeah, we can go see the BMW Performance Center. You can see their track. They have chargers there. Uh, 24 kilowatt uh, charge point units last time I checked. And uh, so let's do that. We'll look for hotels and should, should be a good night. How far away is that from here, Brandon? Two hours? I think it's about 100-ish miles, plus or minus a bit. Yeah, so uh, 30 minutes in the Taycan, right, Anna? <laughs> this is not the Autobahn. As much as I-77 is, well, actually, that's I-85, I think. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. Well, as soon as you get into Atlanta, everyone rips, though, when there's oh, yeah. no traffic. I have allegedly gone triple digits through Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> Never before has that happened in a video game, <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> all right, see you all on the road. We have been cutting over on some back roads to head towards uh, the highway to Spartanburg. And I've got the Taycan, well, no, Panamera <laughs> in sport mode here. Looks like uh, Anna's going pretty slow. So let's pull up alongside and see what's going on. Man, the Taycan looks so cool at night with that light bar, doesn't it? Let's see what she's up to. It says I just hit the line. So see you later. <laughs> just pulled up to the hotel for the night and let's see i am at 57 percent with 146 mile range we stopped in greer which is south carolina um small town really sweet and cute and um hopefully there's chargers here we'll see I'll let you know welcome to greer south carolina yeah this is like home, BMW territory. Yeah, I didn't see any though. Yeah, well, we're actually on the way out tomorrow, you'll see a bunch. So this is what you need to put in the windshield. Oh, we have to pay for parking? No, it's free. Oh, okay, good. Uh, and they have chargers. Oh, good. <laughs> so we may not have to stop tomorrow at all. Oh, wait, how many hours do we have to drive tomorrow? Only a couple. Oh, Atlanta's okay. not far at all. Oh, I thought it was super far. Today. No. It went back quickly, the whole trip. Yeah, and you need this to get into the garage. Okay, got it. Take the card. The card. The card. Okay. Room key gets you in. And uh, we'll go to the second floor and we'll plug both cars in. Okay. Well, that was actually perfect timing because I used just the last few drops of electricity pulling in here and now e-power is not available. It just says hybrid auto, e-power not available. So let's come up over here to where it says hotel guests only and see how the heck we're supposed to get in. So it says welcome open for monthlies only. I should be able to grab our hotel key. We're staying at the Hampton Inn in downtown Greer. And it says enter key card. Boom, right there. Well, huh? that worked great. Awesome. This is a beautiful new hotel, beautiful downtown area. Greer is uh, just this cute little town in South Carolina. And the big city around here is Greenville. And Greenville's really getting a, a makeover. The airport's nice. The downtown's gorgeous. This whole area is getting a lot of investment and it's really looking awesome. So let's look for those chargers. They should be up here somewhere. And, ah, there we go. Mustang Mach-E and a Honda Clarity's charging. Perhaps that's all they had. I think that might be reserved electric vehicles only. And wait, do they literally only have one? Hold on, I'm just gonna park here. Uh, they have two Clipper Creeks and that's it. So, ah, bummer. Leave it to the plug-in hybrid to snag our charging spot of this plug-in hybrid. Well, really would have charged Anna's Tycon more than this. All right, well, let's get out. Let's explore, make sure that this is truly the number of charging stations they have, and then we'll figure out what to do. Guys, check this out. So 
we're coming up with a plan here. I just noticed this Maki is not charging. I have no idea why they would park here and not plug in. Perhaps the unit doesn't work. I'm not totally sure, but the clarity is charging. So I think what we're actually going to do is probably put the Panamera on the charger. It only takes two and a half hours to full charge. It's pretty early. It's not that late. And then before we go to bed, then we'll swap the uh, Tycon over to the charger. That way we can get both cars topped up. Um, very weird to see this Mach-E take a charging spot and not plug in. The only thing I can think is maybe there was an electric car here, but if that was the case, I would leave the charging flap open so someone would plug it in. I don't know, interesting, but I'm gonna plug the Panamera in. And we are plugged in and charging. So we get the same flashing green that we did last night. That must just be the normal green charging flash. All is good. And it shows two hours and 47 minutes to a full charge. So that's what it wants. So we'll set a timer for, I don't know, three hours, and then we'll swap the cars. Good. All righty. And good morning from Greer, South Carolina. Really nice hotel. This one was great. Yeah, and they have breakfast and got, got yourself some yogurt. Yeah. Nice. Let's head up to the cars. We are now up at the cars and we did a little shuffle last night. I think we unplugged the Panamera when it was about half, right, Anna, before you went to bed? 50% exactly. And this should be fully charged. And, you know, multiple times now your Tycon with dual charge ports has come in handy. Yeah. Do you like that feature? It's so nice. Can't hear you. It's so nice. <laughs> it's so nice. <laughs> um, we got to wrap up that cable and then put the handle away properly. And, and this, it, this <laughs> nice. So we have a fully charged Tycon and a uh, half charged Panamera, which is fine. And uh, I think you guys may know why we came to Greer. I'll explain it here in a moment, but those who are car enthusiasts know exactly why we're here. So we are in Greer, South Carolina, which is basically Greer, Spartanburg area. Greenville's not too far away. And uh, we're here because this is the home of BMW in America. Uh, this is where every BMW X3, 4, 5, and 6 is built for the world, I believe. Perhaps they have localized China production for there. Um, at least X5 and X6 are all built here. And I don't remember exactly, to be honest. But um, we are pulling out of the hotel at the moment and we're heading over to the BMW Performance Center and the BMW Museum. Now, this is a place that's very familiar to me. Um, however, I believe on Saturdays, the museum is closed, which is a bit of a shame. So we're at least gonna snoop around and see if we can see anything cool at the BMW Performance Center. And uh, usually on the weekends, they have classes, people learning how to drift and stuff like that. It's a little wet and rainy out today, so it should be a interesting one. Hopefully we can see some cars going sideways. Who knows what we'll find, but we're heading over. I'm driving in electric mode in the Panamera. We're about four miles away from the BMW Performance Center. We're in downtown Greer. Really nice place. This is just your typical South Carolina town right here. Just a beautiful spot. And we are headed to the BMW Performance Center. So I'm looking forward to heading that way. And you can see off to the left, some car carrying trains that are gonna go, no doubt, to the factory up here on the right side of the road, which is the uh, BMW X factory. This is where the SUVs are produced. End of line is over here. There's also a whole bunch of different, uh, I don't know, different buildings around. So you can see line one, security check-in. This is receiving. So that's maybe where raw materials come in. This whole giant building off to the right that's where all the cars are produced. You can see a line of new X5s over there to the right. Uh, very interesting. This is the BMW Performance Center here on the left. They have an off-road course over here and then their track is to the left. So let's uh, pull in here. There's quite a bit of water actually on the road, but uh, all is good. Let's go see what's going on. It says no weapons allowed. No concealable weapons allowed. Okay, well, we should put a big machine gun on the roof then. All right, so that's their off-road display vehicles, and you can actually take delivery of a new BMW here. I see an XM in there, perhaps for dealership training. I've got to spend some time with one of those, perhaps that exact one, I don't know. They have the new X7 in that particular one. They have a, looks like a BMW 760 parked out front, and then an X3. Here are some chargers. These are neat. Looks like they have the new Autel 
level two chargers. These are 80 amp ones. I am definitely going to be trying that out and then taking a look at the chargers over there. So let's plug in here and try out the new Autel level twos. I've never tried this. These are the commercial ones. How cool is it that uh, here in South Carolina, they have these things was not expecting that but we'll plug in we're going to do some walking around i can see a nice e39 over there oh this is freaking awesome so i just saw this unit for the first time at ces autel is really hitting the us big for those of you who know and um man look at how tall that thing is these cables are crazy long the reason it's so tall is so the cables can be as long as possible to reach things and i'm a huge fan of that you can go up to 80 amp dual output by the way so technically 120 amps i mean we're talking juicy ac charging let's see if they have it set up in just a plug and charge configuration so i believe it's asking for some kind of activation here on the screen it says charge via rfid or qr so i'm going to go through the qr code and see what it says and i've successfully initiated the charging session that was actually a little bit annoying you see it's a free charging session i should just be able to plug in and go actually it's saying we're doing 5.7 kilowatts it's possible that this panamera has the fast onboard charger i've never really done the math um, but that's pretty good getting six kilowatts and that's car limited i imagine um yeah, I, I actually did not really love that experience because I had to scan a QR code, sign up for the Autel app, which now that I have on my phone isn't a big deal, and then charge. Very similar to ChargePoint. You can't just plug in and go. Perhaps I could tap a credit card. I don't know, but there should be no activation needed if it's a free level two charger. But I did it. It's good. We're charging. Um, I don't believe we're going to top up the Ticon just because it's not needed and it's already pretty high, but we're going to do some snooping around, walking around. Let's see what we can find. We are now over on the other side by the museum parking and BMW is just going all in with Autel. So they have the big high power level two chargers, a bunch of their commercial level twos, and then the bolt right there. We are on this side where there's also one, two, three, four of their normal 48 amp chargers and then two more high power AC chargers. This is great and also nice Porsche. Um, the problem is they make you use the app to activate, maybe to get the data, see who's charging, I don't know. But I, because I left the Panamera charging at the Performance Center, I can't actually charge the Taycan over here. I know first world problems, but um, I really think their app needs a little bit of work. So hopefully they allow multi-car charging. It actually looks like the Bolt is using the ChargePoint DC fast charger over there. So that's impressive. But uh, we're heading over to the BMW Museum, which I think is closed, but we're going to snoop around. Well, they have that X7 perfectly showcased under there. How long do you think it took them to parallel park that thing in there? <laughs> <laughs> and then this is a gorgeous building. And they have more chargers here, but they're actually the charge point chargers. Uh, lining up this front parking area. So, electric vehicles only. Very nice. Yeah, well that works. That one's broken, half working. This one's offline. This one's working. And that one's working. So, maybe not perfect. That one's working. But that's plenty of chargers. When these first went in, that was like, not too long ago. EVs weren't as popular as they are now, and they're still not that popular in South Carolina. Check this out. Well, they have that X7 perfectly showcased under there. How long do you think it took them to parallel park that thing in there? <laughs> <laughs> and then this is a gorgeous building, and they have more chargers here, but they're actually the charge point chargers uh, lining up this front parking area. So, electric vehicles only. Very nice. Well, that works. That one's broken, half working. This one's offline. This one's working. And that one's working. So, maybe not perfect. That one's working. But that's plenty of chargers. When these first went in, that was like not too long ago. EVs weren't as popular as they are now, and they're still not that popular in South Carolina. This is the vehicle accessory center. So after the vehicles are produced, I guess they have to, uh, have accessories fitted to them and also I believe they're shipping them in and out of here so it's gated over there with security and then this must be where they install you know and performance parts all that stuff 
typically that's done at the port for vehicles on the way in. I wonder if this is done for export vehicles as well. I believe every X3, 4, 5, 6, 7 for the world is built here, at least European stuff is here. You can see here's some brand new X3s, X7s, uh, new X5s, new X6s, refresh cars down there that have just been revealed only a few days ago. Pretty cool stuff for sure. And here we are rolling back up. Just spent, I don't know, half hour, 45 minutes, something like that, driving around, snooping around. Saw some cool stuff. Saw some refresh X5, X6. And uh, yeah, just fun. Love, love seeing all this stuff. Amazing how many Autel chargers they have all around the BMW campus. This place is massive. Um, but I think we're going to head towards the um, Porsche, let's see, headquarters. So let's go, whoops, here. Porsche Experience Center start says you'll get there at 22 percent we're going to pass a bunch of high power chargers between here and atlanta but uh, no need to stop there at the moment so that's kind of the route plan going to south atlanta well maybe we'll get some starbucks along the way and uh, we're going to meet our friend calvin there from porsche and he said that there'll be plenty of chargers for you to zap up your time. We had the Panamera charging for 45 minutes, 48 minutes, and we added or delivered at least four and a half kilowatt hours. So pretty good. And uh, I do like all of this uh, Autel data. They kind of just tell you everything. Touch screen says it's free, but uh, honestly, you should not need an app to activate if it's free. But look at that, 19.2 kilowatts on both posts. They really know how to spec some pretty good units here. And pulling out now in the Panamera. The Panamera is just a bit more of a substantial car than the Taycan, in my impression. I can sit lower without the battery pack below me. Feels a little bit beefier, a little bit bigger. And honestly, I kind of like it more uh, just driving, getting in and out of both. I mean, this is definitely a lot more car than the Taycan, but I've never gotten in a Taycan and it felt like a toy before. And that's kind of what the Panamera does to that thing. This is just a chunky machine. But again, um, you know, plug-in hybrid turbo SE wagon Panamera might be the move. That is pretty freaking cool. So off we go, 166 miles, two and a half hours. Anna's going by, she's in the performance center spirit right here, deploying all of her rear wheel drive horsepower. <laughs> so I think she keeps her spoiler up. It actually looks pretty good in the up position, but uh, yep. All good. Looks like we're turning left up here and we're ready to rock and roll. I have it in a hybrid, so it's just kicked on the combustion engine as we got up to speed. And we are good to go. I am now following Anna over to the Starbucks where we're going to get start the day off right. And um, yeah, should be good. I imagine we'll be into Atlanta by 1.30 or so. Should work out perfectly. We are just on the South Carolina, Georgia border. Traffic starting to pick up a little bit. Beautiful lakes around here. This is a gorgeous drive and the weather is perfect today. 68 degrees, sunny, beautiful lakes around. We just got this line of cars that were all passing this one slow truck and then we can rip. Look at how gorgeous this is. Welcome to Georgia. And we are now in Georgia. Great. Well, only another hour and a half or so to get to uh, the south side of Atlanta. And that is where we are off to. Speed limit 70. Let's rock and roll. We are about 50 miles outside of Atlanta. We're actually running a little bit low on fuel, so I'm gonna to top it up before returning the car, but I'm actually driving in electric mode right now at 80 miles an hour uphill. And you can see we're not even close to maxing out the electrical system. So it really shows you the usability of the PHEV system on this car is really good. I'm just, I always use Volvo as a comparison because I've spent most time in their PHEVs. They can't even do 72 on flat ground constant. Now they have since updated with the extended range plug-in hybrids with a beefier motor, but they used to overheat or hit bottom voltage and it would just kick on the combustion engine. Here we just climbed the hill at pretty good speeds using adaptive cruise, of course. And, um, yeah, just rocked it. This thing's awesome. Anna's right behind me in the Taycan laughing at me on the phone because I got to get fuel, but uh, such is life. We have arrived at the fueling station. I'm just curious how far we've driven since the last refuel. 562 miles and almost 30 MPG. I <laughs> mean, that is just crazy. Again, I ran the battery down just there. We have to depressurize the fuel tank because it's a um, plug-in hybrid. Fuel tank will open shortly. And so they basically pressurize the fuel, I believe, to make it last longer in case it's for whatever reason 
ever um, just sitting and you just pretty much drive it as an electric car. Every plug-in hybrid's kind of this way. I remember BMW plug-in hybrids had issues with their fuel dump valve for pressure, but Porsche seems to be good. The other thing I'm curious about is they recommend 93 minimum, but in Colorado and California and other places, you cannot get 93, only 91. Here in Georgia, you can do 93 though. And let's just top it up really quick. Sending it, doing a top charge. There we go, just about 20 gallons, 80 bucks, roughly. I mean, for as much distance as you get on this car at, you know, highway speeds, it's pretty impressive. But, you know, in an actual road trip, the Taycan actually was easier because we were able to charge at our overnight hotel stops. And uh, we needed to get a snack when we charged at the EA station. So this has been the holdup, surprisingly. But I don't know if that's the case for all of them. There we go. Fully fueled, dead battery, but uh, that's okay. We'll put it on the charger when we drop it off at Porsche. Hello, Atlanta. We are cruising along in electric mode, uh, just sitting in traffic, and uh, that's typical Atlanta. We are getting pushed back on time, but what can you do? Beautiful city, actually, from the highway, and there's a supercharger somewhere just over here that I've been to a bunch. Well, I'm stuck in some traffic. I lost Kyle. He was going real fast, so I'm probably about five, ten minutes behind him. But this is my first time in Atlanta, and it's looking gorgeous. Um, I have 64 miles range and about 11 miles to get there. Looking good. This place over here on the left is one of my dad's favorite restaurants. So every time he goes to Atlanta, or at least when I'm with him, that's where we go. Go to the Park City. And we are arriving to Porsche Avenue, right by the airport. I just flew into Atlanta last week when I went to go pick up the Range Rover and flew right over PEC, Porsche Experience Center, Atlanta. And so that's where we're heading now to go drop this car off. And uh, they've just done a huge track expansion. Maybe we'll get to see a little bit of it at the end of this vlog here. We'll see. We are going to Porsche Avenue. Check that out. Super cool. Love to see it. So let's do it. Let's drop this thing off. Go see some friends over at Porsche. And we'll give it one last send. There we go. Rips. <laughs> For the base car. Really, really enjoyed driving this Panamera. And we have arrived to Porsche Experience Center Atlanta. I've just plugged in the Panamera right here on the level two charger. And uh, this is Porsche's offices. Looks like they have quite a few track activities going on. Saw some cars out on track. Really looking forward to taking a tour of this place. I've never been here before. Always wanted to come. And uh, so let's run inside. Anna drove a little bit slower than I did. I think I was a bit excited. So she's almost 10 minutes behind me. But uh, hey, when you need to send it, the Panamera can do it. Let's track. This is like where the stairs are. And we had that land from the very beginning, but we didn't really do anything with it until, I don't know, three years ago. So we need to source the stairs. Well, you join us here on the back side of the building. If you take a look, you'll see the Porsche Experience Center track. There are certain programs that you can sign up to experience and, you know, try out the cars on your own. They pretty much have every model from GT4 RS, GT3. You can see a whole bunch of tractors down here. You can also drive Taycons out here. And uh, I imagine if you go to the Porsche Experience Center website, you can see what programs are available. But uh, the new track over here is just about to open in the coming days. Probably by the time this video goes up, it will be open. And you can see here, cars just going full send around the track, which we love to see. So the four cylinder out for a gentle cruise, actually. Planes overhead, cool experience for sure. You can see a Taycan out there doing a little bit of auto crossing of some kind, but that's kind of what's going on here. There's restaurants, offices, you name it, they got it. Well, now comes the sad time to say goodbye to the Panamera, but let's take a look at our trip data before we end the road trip video. So we will go into here and trip. And we got, since our reach set, we did 20 hours of driving, just about a thousand miles, 29.9 MPG, average speed of 50. 
and uh, a surprising amount of that was done fully electric. Even with the hybrid battery completely dead, this car, you know, utilizes its electric systems pretty heavily. I was really honestly impressed with it. Only one time did I get it where the whole battery was out and we had no more boost function. But, you know, thinking about this boost function, you really get to use it 99.9% .9 of the time. Very rarely will you ever be out of boost. And um, there you go, just can't believe that efficiency. 30 MPG, and again, we weren't going super slow. That is pretty sick.